It was the summer of, 03. Kenna was pulled out of her room to meet a boy who had moved in next door. They stood at the door awkwardly as the pair stared at each other. Not a word was spoken between the two of them other than mumbled hellos. Kenna knew just from looking at this boy with the strange hair that he was trouble, something about him made her feel uneasy, but she shrugged it off. The two sat on the floor of Kenna's room after a long day of volleyball to play some video games and relax. Kenna. Yeah. Aren't you turning 10 tomorrow? It's your birthday the 16th, right? Yeah why? Aren't you the least bit excited? Why? I'm just growing older, nothing that fun about it. But what about your faded pair? Aren't at least excited that you might be able to know who it is soon? Not at all. Why not? I don't want some stranger's name on my wrist. And I certainly don't want to be expected to marry them. I'd rather just be alone, everyone is just so annoying. Kenna don't be so depressing. I'm sure you and your soulmate will get along just fine. No, they'll definitely think I'm weird like everyone else does. I don't want this, I'd just like to be alone with you, the rest of the world is cruel. You're not weird Kenna, you're just different. So who cares what others think, what matters is that you're happy. I guess. But no one at school likes me, who's to say some stranger will. If they're your soulmate they'll love you not matter what. Right, anyways. What about you Kuru? You're almost 11. Why haven't you gotten your name yet? Maybe I'm just a late bloomer, hopefully I'll get it when I turn 11. If not I'll have to wait until I'm 12. But it's worth the wait for the one I'll love forever. How do you know if you'll love them? What if they turn out to be a bitch? Kenna stop raining on my parade. If they're my soulmate of course they're going to be a great person. I'm just being realistic, not everyone will get along with their faded pair, and actually a lot of people don't really follow what the name says. My ma and pa don't have matching names. Well I'll make it work. If the universe says they're the best for me I won't question it. And what if they turn out to be the exact opposite of what you wanted? You really don't want me to be with my faded pair Kenna. It's like you're trying to find every possible excuse for me to not pursue them even before I know who it is. I'm just saying that you shouldn't expect it to be exactly what you want. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And I don't want you to get your hopes up then get crushed by them. I mean it sounds like you mean well, but you're being really suspicious right now. Are you perhaps jealous? Kuru dropped his controller and leaned closer to Kenna who then quickly leaned away from Kuru and looked the other way trying to avoid his gaze. Not at all. I feel sorry for your soulmate. She'll have to deal with you forever. I'm great, what are you talking about? Sure. I wonder what my soulmate is going to look like. What do you want your soulmate to look like? Honestly there's so many options. Maybe she'll be super hot with a huge rack. Kenna's stomach turned as she crossed her arms over her chest while Kuru continued to speak. Or maybe she'll be super short and chubby. There's just so many hot girls. Kenna's heart sank. But anyways. What about you Kenna? What kind of man would you want? None, I don't want anyone. What don't you get? Why not? I told you. Everyone is so mean just because I'm different. I can't be by your side forever Kenna. Why not? Can't we always be friends? Sure, but when we grow older it won't be the same. Then I'll just be alone. Other people scare me. Kenna don't be such a baby. Other people aren't that bad. They are, you just don't see it because you're normal like them. Kenna you're normal too, there's nothing about you that's weird, you're just introverted. But they pick on people like me because I'm not like them. You'll find someone fit for you eventually. And Kenna don't forget I'm always here if you need help. Especially if someone is bullying you. I know. But like you said you can't be with me all the time. I wish I could be. But Kenna do what you think is best. If being alone is what makes you happy then go for it. But I'm pretty sure you're just being dramatic. Everyone need a little company or you'll just get bored alone. Right, sure. Kenna laid back in the floor and stared at the ceiling as she pondered about what her soulmate would look like. All she could imagine was Karu and it made her upset. Hey Kenna. Yeah. What if you were my soulmate? Would you be happy? I'd decline. You didn't even give that a second thought. You just immediately rejected me. I told you I don't want to date anyone, even you. Why not? Did you want me to be with you forever? Yeah but I don't want to date anyone, I told you. What's so bad about dating me? I thought you said I was the only good person you knew. Still. I'm not normal, you deserve someone better. I'm not what you want anyway so why would you care? You should be glad that I rejected you, you won't be tied down to me. And you could go find the girl of your dreams. You're such a downer. You wouldn't even be a little sad that you'd lose me. Who says I wouldn't be? Why can't you let loose a bit? 
Why do you always look so sad? Can't you be happy for once? I wish. All I did was say how I felt. Sorry. The rest of the evening she could feel the tension between them, but she tried to cover up her feelings. Kenna woke up early like she did every weekend to play on her consoles, but this time she hadn't even fallen asleep yet. She lifted herself off her bed and glanced at her iPod which lit up beside her from an incoming message. Her eyes were all watery and her vision was blurry, but she could make out it was from Kuru. Still she ignored it and got up. He's definitely mad at me. Why do I even say anything? I should have kept my mouth shut, I'm so stupid. Kenna got up to make her way to the television her games were hooked up to until she glanced at her mirror as she passed by. She walked towards it as she rubbed her eyes and tried to make out her reflection in the dark room. She wore one of Karu's big hoodies he had lent her and shorts also probably from him. For some reason she felt quite pleased looking at her disheveled appearance in the mirror. This kinda makes me look like Karu. All I need is the weird bedhead. But my hair is too long for that. Kenna glanced down at her dresser and grabbed a pair of scissors from her school supplies. She held them up and pondered. Maybe just a bit off the bottom. No one would notice. So she did. Her hair reached below her chest and after a trim I didn't look much different, just a little crooked. It doesn't look shorter at all. It wouldn't hurt to go a little shorter, no one would notice anyways. So she did it again. Shit, it's all on the floor now. Quickly Kenna kicked the hairs under her bed and dresser before pondering again if she should continue. She still didn't feel pleased by the results. It still doesn't look that different. I wish I could just cut it all off. Ma and Pa would kill me though. Still despite her reluctance she held the scissors once more in her hands. Kenna was going to go again before she was stopped by something in the corner of her eye. She put down her scissors and held out her left arm that seemed to have some sort of black residue on it, it was hard to make out in the poorly lit room. I can't see anything. Are those from my hair? I don't really feel anything though. She tried to rub it off with no success so she quickly grabbed her iPod and held the light from it to her wrist. What is this? Did Karu write his stupid name on my wrist with permanent marker or something? When the hell did he do this? Kenna made her way to the bathroom beside her room and tried scrubbing the name off. Again it didn't come off. What the hell is this? What did he write this with? She tried remembering what had happened yesterday, but still she couldn't figure out how or when he'd done it. She checked everyone else on her, but it seemed that was the only thing that appeared on her. What a dumbass. Whatever, it's not important now, I'm wasting precious video game time. It'll come off eventually. A loud bang at Kenna's door jolted her awake as she realized she had fallen asleep on the floor with her television still running. What? Kenna it's already 12 o'clock. When are you planning on getting out of your room? Oh. Um, sorry I was just doing homework, I didn't realize what time it was. Alright, but don't forget everyone is coming over in a couple hours, you better get ready. What? Did you already forget it was your birthday? Maybe. You're so funny Kenna. Make sure you look presentable for this evening. And happy birthday sweetie. Thank you ma. The sound of her mother's footsteps soon vanished and she quickly pushed herself off the floor and cleaned up. She noticed the some hairs still on the floor from last night and quickly swept the rest of them under furniture. She then stood back up and looked at her work in the mirror. Her stomach dropped. It's not even that much shorter. And it's so crooked. My parents are going to kill me. So she decided to go back in and fix it up only to realize how hard it was to cut her own hair. Combined with her nervousness and unsteady hands she ended up cutting her hair drastically shorter in an attempt to fix it. It looks so much shorter now. And it's just as bad. Someone's definitely going to notice. What do I do? If I try to cut it anymore I'm literally going to go bald. She tried to calm down and decided she would tie her hair up, no one would notice how long it was if she put it in a bun. There. Okay, I'm safe for now. Finally she dressed up in her jogging pants and a loose t-shirt before heading downstairs to get food. Good morning sweetie. Good morning. Do you want anything to eat before people start coming over? Yes please. Her mom turned around and scanned her up and down. You still haven't changed out of your pajamas. You know Tetsuro and his family are coming over soon. No, I changed. Honey at least wear something a little more nicer. Your joggers have dirt stains on them and your t-shirt has wrinkles. A lot of people are coming over tonight you know. So. They won't care what I wear. Come on Kenna, I put an outfit in your bed last night, a nice clean shirt and your plaid skirt. I don't want to wear a skirt. You know I hate wearing them. Please Kenna, it's just for today. A skirt won't hurt you. Go get changed now before your dad sees you, I'll make you something to eat in the meantime. Fine. 
Kenna obliged not wanting to have another confrontation with her father about her sloppy attire. She put on one of her rarely wore skirt and look at herself in the mirror again. She absolutely hated it, but decided to put Karu's hoodie on top of it all which made her feel better. Can't they just buy me some nice pants, they know how much I absolutely hate skirts. Kenna sighed rolling up the hoodie's sleeve. As she did so she noticed Karu's name still tattooed onto her. This stupid thing. It doesn't even look like I did anything to it last night, it's still completely intact from me trying to scrape it off. Stupid Karu. She felt uneasy. Now my mom is going to ask me about it. Every time Karu comes up all she can think about is us getting together. I hate it. Kenna rolled back down her sleeves to hide the name and went off to eat. Hey guys, it's Fizz here, and uh, just, I'm sorry for um, this video being short again. I'm not feeling well, I'm feeling very sick, but still want to put something out because, I don't know, because I just wanted to. <laughs> I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, um, and I was really excited while writing the story, so I was like, fuck it, I'll just do something. <laughs> just something small, at least. Um, but I enjoyed writing the story so much, actually, that on my Instagram and my Discord, I posted fan art I drew for myself. <laughs> it was very, I like the story a lot, like where it's going, I like the concept. I hope you guys do too. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed, stay safe out there, bye.